Hey everyone, this is Aaron Ozzy, Director of Marketing for Music Theater Works. I'm coming to you live from the North Shore Center for Performing Arts in Skokie. We just concluded intermission for day two of the first show of our 2021 season, Legends of the 50s and 60s Greatest Hits. Sitting next to me is our Producing Artistic Director for Music Theater Works, Kyle A. Dugan. Kyle, how are you? Hey, Aaron. Great. Good, good. Uh, how, how do you think the show is going so far? It's great. It's great. It's a, um, a very different from Music Theater Works because we're obviously doing outdoor theater, which is not typical. But as we've learned through the year, uh, you know, rolling with the punches is the best way um, to kind of get through it. And we're just so glad to be doing live theater again and uh, looking forward to being indoors and uh, then finishing our season with some great shows with Mamma Mia and Ragtime and Billy Elliot. Um, but this show in particular is a perfect thing for outdoors um, uh, with the sun shining and a, on a, or on a lovely summer evening to yeah. really um, celebrate the great 50s and 60s music. So Yeah, and you know, I, I know that we're covering a bunch of legendary artists, Elvis Presley, Buddy Holly, Aretha Franklin, the Cordettes, uh, CCR, the Beatles, the I Supremes. Mean, the Supremes. Yeah. I mean, there's 45 songs based on what I interviewed Jermaine uh, yesterday about. Yeah. And so it's just chock full of great music. Is uh, out of, I know that, you know, you're a big music lover. So out of the music that's being performed in this production, what's your favorite songs being covered? I have to say, my one of my favorite things that we did was um, we looked at um, a, a very well known song sung by. Elvis, um, Hound Dog, and we actually, um, the, the song has a history of um, sung originally by Big Mama Thornton. So we actually do a, a two, two, two versions of Hound Dog, and it's one of my, my uh, favorite kind of moments of the show to hear the original version, how it was sung originally, and then how Elvis treated the song. And many of the songs in the concert, you don't realize that those, those songs either originated with certain artists or certain artists covered them after they had originated, um, like Proud Mary with Ike and Tina Turner, you know, originally not written by them, but then popularized by them. So yeah. I really think that um, one of the cool things about this, this concert is that you're brought back to these songs that you may not have heard you know, on the radio because it's not pop music anymore, but you know them, you love them, and they're songs that that people, you know, will go back, you know, at intermission. I heard people humming and singing songs with their loved ones. And then after the show yesterday, after our first performance, I really, um, people just raving about, oh, I hadn't heard that song in such a long time. It was so great to hear, from the past. you know, Tutti Frutti, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that's what's really special is out of these 45 songs, no matter what, you're going to know a good chunk of them because they're again greatest hits from the 50s and 60s right so. and you know i know that you know you've been in theater for uh, a long time and just coming out of the covid pandemic i mean god rest everyone that's passed and everything that's happened uh like how nervous were you or kind of antsy were you to really get back into action well i know being around the artists we were antsy to get back to work it sure. makes their livelihood something they they love to do but i think the 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 thing that's most special to see is that the artists haven't lost their passion for for what they do and they're putting it out on the stage and i think the audience is recognizing how much they really missed live music and live theater and um i know i've missed it because it's my career it's my passion as well yeah. but sharing that with a live audience is just something that you you can't get on zoom or netflix it is something truly special and truly something um for to celebrate with the community coming out of something like this pandemic. So. And, and I feel like it's really a much needed distraction for really for what's been going on in the world. And I think things 100%. are returning to normal across the board, which is great. And obviously we're day over day here with the show, we're seeing bigger and bigger audiences. So yeah. people are feeling more comfortable to come back out, uh, you know, still socially distanced for this concert, mm -hmm. but, and for the rest of the season, as you already established, yeah, it's gonna yeah. be all indoors. Yeah. Now talking to different uh, attendees, you know, of today's show, uh, what has the reactions been so far? Well, they've they've loved it. You know, it is it's very different again from what we do in the fact that it is outdoors. So it's it gives it's a more casual feel than kind of coming and seeing you know Camelot or um, uh, Man of La Mancha or um, what we did Joseph last season or two seasons ago I should say. Um, 
Uh, but what they are enjoying is the fact that they you know, can go and get wine at concessions. Again, one of the biggest perks of being here at the North Shore Center, uh, moving our home, new, to our new home, is the fact that we are able to serve liquor to folks. We are able to have a, you know, a wonderful parking lot that's easy to access. Um, and so the, the outdoor setting is more casual, so people can go have drinks, dance in the, in the, in the lot while they're listening to something like Tutti Frutti, mm-hmm. uh, which we've been seeing a lot. And so I think other than sitting and kind of passively watching, it's a, it's a more um, uh, uh, kind of a casual and fun, fun uh, night or afternoon at the theater. So. Right. And, and, you know, I, us both working for Music Theater Works, you're right at the helm of the company. You're leading the charge here. We're definitely headed in a very positive and very modern uh, direction. Now, just for everyone out there listening right now, just so uh, you can kind of speak to this, Tell us a little bit about yourself, like, and where you come from, like, how you got to this. Yeah, problem. so I worked at Music Theater Works for many years. So I, I, um, <clears throat> I come from an operetta and a musical theater background. Um, and after after leaving, uh, living in London and working in musical theater in London, I moved to Chicago because it was the city I wanted to create art in, uh, and happened a- across uh, a job at Music Theater Works and worked here for quite a few years moved away, um, took another job, and uh, then was um, interviewed and uh, essentially offered uh, the position to take over the helm of the company. And um, so I think I'm, it's special in a way that a lot of um, new artistic directors or producing artistic directors might not have the experience of knowing the audience. I mean, I spent, uh, I think, seven years here prior to leaving and then, of course, coming back. So sure. I know music theater works. Um, uh, I know our audiences and I know the community. I'm a part of the community and I think I'm able to uh, create theater that our audiences want to see or they may not know and I know they'll love to see. And I think that's what's special about this concert and I think what's special about the future of what we're programming is we're really looking to to um, we're looking for it, like you said, but we're also, I, I know our current audience and I know our community and I know that, um, that we will continue to create great theater, great music, the works here at Music Theater Works. So. Well, thank you so much, Kyle, for joining uh, the interview today. It was really exciting speaking with you. We are going to be speaking with uh, Martin L. Woods, the co-director of the show, yes. uh, right when we're done here in just about an hour. So please tune back in for that. And in the meantime... Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.